Well, hello everyone. How's it going? How have you been? It's Friday as I'm filming this. I film ahead. Um, I haven't filmed the last two days. There's just been a lot going on. It's been very hectic. Um, I'm a little stressed out, but you know, we'll get through things. Um, my brother's been in the hospital. He did come home yesterday. Um, I, of course, his dog was here with me. I mean, she's always here, but he takes them. She lives here, but when he's not here, she goes with him. So he's gone a lot. So she's gone a lot. So this was, she'd never been without him here. And of course, you know, so I've got her, I've got my two. She is the sweetest dog you could imagine. Just so big dog, but just so meek and quiet. Um, but different schedules, different food, all the different things. And of course, Teddy is crazy. Charlie and her, Charlie's now the point. He'll go in there and look at her in there. You know, he's fine. Teddy is just scared of everything and everyone. So I'm trying to keep like Teddy separate from her. Um, like if I take him out. Um, so I just take Teddy separate. So because he'll just bark and like, you know, we're being attacked. He's just, he's so anxious. Um, which he is on medication for, and it's helping as far as the territory marking. He's not really doing that anymore. He wears the belly band. Those are usually clean. Very rarely does, has I found anything in it. Um, but it's just when he does it to my brother, he does it to his dog. He's just very anxious. So it kind of like, it'd be easy if you could just take all three out at once, feed them all the same things, do all the same thing. But I had, but anyway, uh, we got through that. And I mean, she was no trouble. It wasn't like it was hard. It was just, you know, three dogs it's a lot. Um, <coughs> and then, um, on Wednesday, I went downtown to check out this store. It's like a antique mall. They rent out booth space and do consignment. Um, and you can do crafts there. You can do, you know, whatever. Um, so I guess it's more like a vendor mall than a traditional antique mall, if you know what I'm saying. Um, but I finally made it down there. Never been there before and asked about space and I got, I rented a space at this place. It's called um, PS Treasures and Collectibles and it's in downtown Waterloo, Iowa. It's on Sycamore Street next to Rodney's. If you know, you know. It's on the same block as Newton's Paradise Cafe. If you know, you know. Sycamore Street, downtown Waterloo, Iowa. Um, it is a, I've been, and I've been showing it on TikTok. Oh, that's the other thing. Let me just add to my stress and anxiety by once again, trying to figure out a way I can reactivate my second YouTube channel. I was going to do author content on there, but then I just was like mm -mm, making myself a target. Not going to do that. But now I'm like, Hey, I can, cause I love to film. I like to film on TikTok shorts that I can then put on Instagram, Facebook, and then you can put them on YouTube. You, I could put them on this channel, but then since I'm now vlogging five times a week, it just, it would be so cluttered. So I was like, why don't I put my shorts over on the second channel, which I've renamed Ann Eckhart Shorts. So the little video, the shorter videos that are filmed, you know, vertically like this. Um, that, that channel is now linked below this video. A lot of you are already subscribed. So if you want to see those shorter, um, the shorter content, short form content, that's what it's called, short form content. That's over there. Um, so I filmed a couple for that. And yeah, it's exciting. It's not a traditional booth like you see a lot of people where you have kind of three walls that are the same, you know, like five by five by five or whatever. Um, this back in the day, and I mean back in the day. So on this block, the buildings are all attached, but then, you know, they have separate buildings. So the people who owned this particular building, there's three storefronts on the bottom. Um, and then they lived in a penthouse in the top. The three storefronts back in the day, they had an antique store and it was big. I mean, it was so fun. My dad and I used to go there a lot and just wander around, buy a little here and there. My, if there was something John Deere, my dad would get it. And it was just packed. It was dark. I do remember it being very dark. Um, that closed, of course, years ago. And I guess in the interim, then eventually Rodney's, which is um, kind of like soul food restaurant, went in to one of the spaces, so they closed that off. The other two storefronts stayed open, and that's where these people have put this shop. So you go in, there's only one door in, just like it was in the antique mall. There's doors, but they block them off. You gotta go in the one door. And so it's these two 
storefronts and they're pretty big. Like when I first saw them open, I was like, gosh, that's small, but it's a lot bigger when you get in there. Um, I think they said before they got it, it, there was a beauty shop on one side and a barber shop on the other, probably owned by the same people. And you go from it. One side was painted this like purpley mauvey color. And then the barber shop, they painted black. Or was it bright purple? Bright purple on one, black on the other. So they found a paint that's kind of like this pretty mauve, I would say, color to paint over that, which I like because it's they've also the lighting is very bright now. So when you walk in, it's well lit, it's nice and bright, it's open, it's accessible. Um, but the walls, I think, kind of soften it. So I like it. Um, there's also kind of indentions like you would go to a beauty salon and maybe each chair has a little indention, not the walls fully out, but a little bit there. Those they've turned into this booth space and they provide the shelving. Now there's shelves on the wall. Um, if I get more into it, it might be worth it for me to bring in a standalone shelving unit that I can fit more on, but for now, comes they put five shelves up. I also chose the one they had because the person next to me um, has pegboard, which they put in for him. And so the back of the pegboard was on mine. I was like, oh, I'm gonna use that. And he's like, let me put up another piece of pegboard on your side so you can use all the holes, right? Because the other side, they were poking through. So now I have pegboard on the one side. I'd say it's about two, two three feet deep. And I think I'm estimating it's like six feet wide. Um, so on that side, I've got the pegboard and they gave me the hooks. And on the other side, the person before me had been hanging, they did crafts and they'd been hanging these artwork initials that they were making. Anyway, there's a blank wall, there's nails there, but I'm thinking I can get some um, bulletin board and put little things there back in the day, <laughs> back in the day. Across from this antique store on Sycamore Street in downtown Waterloo, Iowa, I always get people that watch this and they think we're in Canada. No, Waterloo, Iowa, United States of America. Across the street was a miniature store. We had a dollhouse store. And that's what she would do with her little minis is she had bulletin boards and little bags with the minis and poke them. I'm like, that's genius. Went to my, it took my brother to a shop after he got out of the hospital because he had a few things to do there. And he had a table and gave it to me. It's a, be like a coffee table but it's the perfect size because it's got the top and then it's got a nice shelf on the bottom so again you know um maybe in the future I get a big a bigger bookcase or I could expand the thing is they have the booth spaces but then they also do consignment so people take larger items in or just a basket of stuff and they'll consign it um and so they kind of move things around to fill the store out that way, their own stuff, if people are consigning, whatever. So it looks very full, but they can move stuff around if you want more space. The cost is only $75 a month for this space, and they only take 10%, which is when I went down there, I was like, I had my rules of like, I'm not going to pay more than this. Calico, which is the more traditional antique store, antique mall in our area, is very expensive. Now you do get bigger space there, but I believe the booth space at Calico starts at $200 a month and goes up. And then I think they take 30%. So it's a lot. Um, I've taken you guys in there before and things are very, very expensive because it is more that traditional antique store. Now they have opened it up to some boutique sellers. So now there's clothing in there, but the overall vibe, it's, Listen, it's beautiful, it's fun to go and look, but it's just a bit of a more upscale experience. Um, now, when I go in there, I'm looking at it like a reseller, like, well, I can't get this to resell, I can't get that. So as a booth owner, um, might be a little different. They do get a lot of people coming. Uh, the other thing with Calico is that you have to provide your, you have to set your booth up yourself. Like, here's your space, you bring in your shelves. I don't, I would have to hire, I'd have to buy stuff. I'd have to hire somebody to move it. I was just like, oh, my God. Um, so this is perfect. It's set up, ready to go. I could expand. There's other spaces and I'm sure that they would help me, you know, facilitate that. So I'm really happy. Again, 75 bucks a month. They only take 10%. They have a um, POC, POS system. <laughs> POS, which is point of sale. So barcode system. Um, so I have an online site that I use. I go in and type everything in, print the sheet out. All the little tags are on it. And then I just attach it. 
and take it down there, put it on, see ya. So I have been working on that the past um, couple days. Let's see, I got it on Wednesday. Yesterday, I went down and put some things in it. Of course, Wednesday night when I was trying to create these tags, my computer is now, I hate this, not the computer, the printer. I hate this printer. I hate it, hate it, hate it. I'm going to get another one. But anyway, I'll watch the sales because this one's crap. I was having the worst time just printing anything. It was like, no, nah, not going to print. But yesterday I took more down and then, no. Yesterday I took the stuff that I was able to do Wednesday night. Last night I worked on it again. So now I have a big tote to take down and put over there. Um, I'll show it a bit in these vlogs. But if you want to see like these TikToks I'm filming for it, um, you can head over to the second channel to watch those. Um because it's just kind of, it's so much easier when you're in public to do, you know, TikToks. And I know not everybody likes that format, but when I do a TikTok, if it's under a minute and a half, I can move it to Instagram as a reel, Facebook as a reel, YouTube short, you know, it just works nicely. So anyway, um, that is what has been going on. So as far as eBay goes, I'm kind of trying to figure out what my rule is going to be. Like, I don't like, of course, having to ship breakables. Does anyone? So glass and things that I have that I'm always kind of like, mm, I don't want to get that or like, oh, it's here, but do I want to list it? I'm going to try there first. Some things I look up that are a little smaller, like I got these McDonald's salt and pepper shakers. I've got two different sets. It looks like I can get $25 each on eBay for these. So I'm going to try those on eBay first. I got Bluebirds of Happiness the other day and initially I was like, well, I'm going to list them on eBay, but then I'm like, ugh. I'm going to try them down there first. Obviously, I can try it. If they're not selling, I can bring it home. But um, I thought the stuff that I've been bringing in that hasn't gotten listed yet, if I can do that, I've got, let me see the table over there. That purple bag is full of, I think it's all Christmas ephemera. So just figuring out the booth space. Years ago, my dad had a booth. So it's not like I'm unfamiliar with this process, especially in more of a vendor mall situation. Um, where you're real, I want to price things to sell. I do not want stuff sitting there. I want to move it. I buy cheap. As long as I'm making, you know, three, four times my money at this place, I'm happy and we will continue to move along and hopefully um, get some things going. So there is that. So that's been taking up my time, um, kind of just setting that up in the last couple of days, figured out now the system, I, I, I know what to do, make it faster. Um, I haven't done any writing this week, which is shameful. I need to do that. Hopefully this weekend I can do that. But see, now I'm like, oh, I've got an antique mall booth. I can get little things because I love the little things. And a lot of times I'll go and I'll either get little things and then they sit there. Or I have to put them in a lot on eBay and they don't really bring that much because people are always like, I only want that one thing. Um, or I don't get it because I'm like, well, what am I going to do with it? I'm not going to list that little thing on eBay. But I'm like, I can put it in this booth. So... That is what has been going on. Um, just a, just a, I don't want to say super stressful week, but just, you know, hectic. Hectic is what I'm going to say. So today I've got a pickup order from Sam's I need to do. Um, just some basics. Of course, as soon as I um, place the order, I'm like, oh, there were these two other things that I completely forgot. I can order those later. Um, I'm going to go down to the booth, put some more things in it. And then I really need to get to writing. Um, the booth space is small, so it's not taking me much to really start filling it up. Um, but yeah, it's a new adventure. I've always wanted a booth. Like I said, back in the day, my dad had this type of thing. If you're, again, back in the day from Waterloo, Iowa, on the other side of the river on this block near Brown Bottle Restaurant, on a corner, there was a big building. It was Iowa's largest indoor flea market or something like that and they rented shelf basically shelving bookcases um in the front in the back there were other ways but in the front there they had these the book I can't remember if they were bookshelves or if they were like the industrial storage shelves like I use for my inventory in the basement I can't remember but my dad rented one and he was liquidating some of his John Deere stuff of course then he would buy more stuff there but um so we would go every week and I'd go with him and help him with that so um that place eventually closed and they tore the whole building down but there are a lot of us or his friends were like gosh I wish we had a place like that um so that's that's what this place reminds me of more of that vendor mall um 
Calico back in the day, you used to have to, I've had a friend who's got a booth there, so you don't have to do this anymore, but they used to, the previous owners, you had to like give them an example of what your booth would look like and keep it themed. So like you were going to do primitives or you did this. Now, I don't think they do that, but um, this place, you know, it's whatever you want as long as it fits with our guidelines. The guy, the husband, he sells sports cards. So the first three cases in the front are sports cards that not only are his, but they also can sign. Um, so it's really, it's really a great place. I hadn't been in there yet. Um, they opened last year and just, you know, hadn't gotten out. But yeah, if you are Waterloo, um, it's a fun place to check out lots and lots of vendors with some really cool things. Um, and much more affordable than a traditional antique mall, which, you know, there's, there's places for traditional antique malls too. I just, that wasn't going to be a place for me because I pick up a hodgepodge and I'm just about making a profit. I mean, obviously I pick up things I'm drawn to, but I'm like, is this going to make me money? Is it going to make me money? I don't know. So anyway, that is the update of what's been going on here. It's already 16 minutes long that I've been babbling. But um, I will give you a look at this place because I am going to go down here. I'm waiting to do my pickup order at Sam's and then I'll go down and take down what I have. And so I'll show you that um, when I go. Okay, I am downtown Waterloo getting ready to go into my booth. I had to park around the corner. This, you know, I don't know if your downtowns are like this. I think most downtowns have issues with parking. Um, Cedar Falls the same way. It's just very hard to find parking because there's limited parking. Um, now in Waterloo, we have metered parking Monday through Friday up until 5 p.m. Then you can park for free. But, um, and I also forgot my quarters. So, oh shoot. No, I can. They do have this new online pay thing I can use here. But I was, there was a spot right in front of the store. I'm like, oh yay. And then a van had parked there and like taken up both spots people. So I'm gonna have to get my toe and walk around the corner. It's not too far, but it, that is the struggle with being downtown. Um, there just can't pull up to this parking lot and just get right out and go in. It's going to have to circle around, find a space, all things. So anyway, there is that, but, um, I'll show you a little bit when I'm inside and hopefully fill it up a little bit more. Still have lots to bring in, but yesterday was, yesterday was the first time I brought anything. So I just hate to drag that toad all the way around the corner, but I mean, it sounds like, oh, it's only around the corner, but you know, it's a little bit down there and it's a big old tote. It's a big old tote. I know some people get like a rolling cart, you know, back in the day I had a cart. Um, it got, we don't have it anymore, but I don't want to like, I've already had to order hanging bags, labels. Well, I can print the, I have been printing the labels on paper and they're just cutting them and taping them, which is fine. She said a lot of people do that, but I did order specific labels that work um, with their system. And did I get anything else that's coming? I don't think so. I think those are the two things. Um, so anyway, more things are coming. And oh, this is the other thing I need to do is I need, or I have started a separate sheet where I need to track the expenses specifically for the antique ball move. They do collect sales tax, so we'll get a 1099 form, which is great. I am all about that because I don't want the IRS thinking I'm doing anything wonky. So give me the 1099 form, but I will need to track my expenses for this separately than my eBay expenses. Um, so it's kind of keep track of, of that. So, I mean, there'll be some overlap. And at the end of the day, when it all gets mixed in together, the IRS is really looking for your total income and your total expenses. But um, bookkeeping purposes on my end, I obviously, want to keep things separate because with the booth rent, she did prorate me um, for the month. So I only paid $50 for the first month. It'll be 75 next month. They take one per, or they take 10% um, and then supplies. So getting it going, you know, you're going to have some, but it is a fun project. And I, I am dragging my feet because I don't want to get out of the car. I'm like maybe if I ride around again, that space will be open, but then you're just circling for hours when you just need to like get out and go. I'm getting super out for windy, so I don't know if you can hear me, but we do have this thing now, so I am able to pay online. Um, there's fees involved, obviously, but when I don't have quarters, this works. Here's my booth. They put this pegboard up with the hooks and these shelves, so you can see it's not very deep. My brother gave me this table. 
I need to take these two home already because I mispriced them. So I need to do that. So I've got a little bit here. Here's what I'm going to put in. Here's what I've done so far. I hung these here on these nails. I'm going to get a pegboard here, though. Um, just kind of spacing things out. Still lots of room, obviously. But I'm loving the pegboard to hang things. That works so well. Like, I love it. Love it. So still lots of room. That down there. I guess I could put it up here. There we go. Yay. It's still, I can put something large here, obviously. Um, oh, I even got an outlet. Here is the view from outside. So it's PS, Treasures and Collectibles, next to the Brown Derby, next to Rodney's Kitchen. Over there, that little tiny, tiny, tiny storefront. That was the dollhouse store years and years ago. Now we're walking back to the car. That's not, I, it's not far at all. And my tote wasn't too far. I have to take these home because I had entered quantity two, but that's if you're selling them together as a pair. So Friday, downtown's starting to clear out. She said they get a lot of people from out of town because they will Google antique stores in Waterloo versus people in Waterloo are probably Googling to see somewhere else. So be interesting if the weekends get busier. <sighs> but I still have lots of room and lots more things to bring. <laughs>